following are basic anchoring procedures. Before dropping the anchor, determine the anchoring method you will use, taking into account weather and sea conditions, water depth, nature of the seabed, and traffic conditions. Please note that the terminology used in this DVD is based on that of the Oil Company's International Maritime Forum and the International Maritime Organization. For the purpose of this DVD, the vessel is assumed to be a capsized bulk carrier. There are two anchoring methods, normal anchoring and deep water anchoring. In the normal method, an anchor is dropped by releasing the brake from the cockpit position. Large ships normally use larger anchors, so it is common to use the deep water anchoring method because normal anchoring involves unnecessary risks. Deep water anchoring is conducted at an anchorage with a water depth of over 25 meters. Typically, the anchor is dropped after walking out the cable using a windlass. You should drop the anchor by walking it out until it is close to the bottom and then set it by breaking with the windlass. If the depth exceeds 50 meters, however, normal anchoring is dangerous. We strongly recommend using the windlass to ease out the cable until the anchor rests on the bottom. The specifics of your anchoring plan must be understood by the anchor team. In this example, the ship uses the port side anchor for riding to a single anchor. Since the water depth is 30 meters, the length of cable to be paid out is 180 meters, or 6.5 shackles, according to a formula based on the rule of thumb. Under heavy weather, the cable payout length is 265 meters, or 9.5 shackles, according to a calculation formula based on the rule of thumb. An anchor's holding power varies according to anchor type and to nature of the seabed. The ship is also subject to external forces such as wind pressure and wave drift force, which vary according to type of ship and the direction of the wind and waves. The point to remember is that the tension generated by external forces is constantly changing and to this tension is added what is known as a shock or snap load. Now let's take a look at anchoring procedures. Begin with a communication test using a transceiver or a talkback to confirm that all hands involved in the operation can communicate with one another. Next, get the anchor ball in position so that it can be hoisted at the same time the anchor is let go. Release the anchor lashing wire after confirming that the windlass handbrake is secure. During anchoring operations, the state of the windlass handbrake must be known at all times. Begin windless trial and warming up. Begin with no load running. 
conduct this operation for a longer period of time during winter and in cold climates. Engage the clutch for the windlass while tightening the handbrake. Secure the clutch stopper pin. Remove the chain stopper. Stand by after loosening the handbrake to prepare for anchor cable walkout. Remove the chain stopper while tightening the brake for the other anchor. Then stand by with the anchor in its original position. Walk out the anchor until it is just above the water's surface. In some cases, the anchor in this position is made standby anchor to prepare for an emergency. Thanks, man. Port anchor, swimming zone, made walk back. Shimashita. Look around to check headway. Begin walk out at a ship speed of less than three knots. Walk back. Walk back. One shackle horse pipe. Begin walk out up to the number of shackles ordered by the master. Secure a clearance of between 5 and 10 meters between the anchor and the bottom. The Japan Captains Association recommends a clearance of 5 meters. Too great a clearance may accelerate the anchor falling speed, resulting in your inability to control cable payout speed and damage to the anchoring system. Tighten the handbrake, then disengage the clutch. Stand by port anchor, sir. Stand by port anchor. Check headway using navigational equipment, such as the GPS and Doppler log. Check the sea surface for headway. Check the sea surface and confirm that there is no headway.
Also use the equipment to check headway, then report it and adjust your speed with the engine as necessary. Check the water surface and confirm that the ship has begun making sternway. Use the equipment to check sternway and confirm that the speed is less than 0.5 knots. Order Let Go Anchor after checking surrounding conditions. Order Let Go after looking at the sea surface and checking surrounding conditions. The windless operator now drops the anchor by loosening the brake. Check the speed of the anchor chain exiting the windlass. Gradually loosen the brake. Then stop paying out the cable when the chain is at short stay. In this example, about two shackles, or 1.5 times the water depth, should be your yardstick. Two shackles, sir. Two shackles. At the same time that you drop anchor, either hoist the anchor ball or turn on the anchor light. The operator can normally handle the brake safely at a cable falling speed of approximately 3 to 4 meters per second. When dropping anchor, carefully loosen or tighten the brake to adjust the cable falling speed within these limits. Gradually pay out the cable by half shackles and adjust falling speed until you have reached the length ordered by the bridge. When doing so, remember to watch the angle between the cable and the water surface as well as the direction of the cable being paid out and maintain sternway to prevent the cable from piling up on itself on the bottom. To prevent the windlass and the anchor chain from being damaged, you must maintain sternway within 0.5 knots. Check anchor cable tension to determine whether or not the sternway is appropriate. Then report your observation to the bridge. If necessary, request that the engine be used to adjust sternway. For deep water anchoring in depths greater than 50 meters, maintain sternway within 0.3 knots so that it does not exceed the cable payout speed. Seven shackles in the water, hold on cable, sir. Seven shackles in the water, hold on cable. After the ordered length of anchor cable has been paid out, the hold on cable order is issued. Now tighten the windlass handbrake and wait. Confirm that the anchor cable has been brought up and the bow has turned toward the wind. When brought up, the cable will tighten once and then slacken, and the bow turns toward the wind or current. Reconfirm by observing the heading of other ships. Brought up anchor, sir. Brought up anchor. Make fast cable. Make fast cable. Check the anchor cable position on the controller. Adjust as necessary, and then set the chain stopper and put in the stopper pin. Provide for clearance between the chain stopper and the link. Made fast cable, sir. Dismiss all stations. Bushou開け. 
At an anchorage where the ship will be anchoring for the first time, always use a hand lead to check nature of the seabed beforehand. Lower a lead with a greased arming hole to the bottom, recover it and observe the bottom substances attached to it. Depending on factors such as nature of the seabed, strength of current and swing motions, an anchor can become buried in the seabed or caught on debris if the ship is at anchor for a long period of time, 10 days to 2 weeks. To avoid this, you must periodically sight anchor.